team, today we're going to be looking at and figuring out what kind of designer do you want to be, all right? So let's go. So in the early stages of my career, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this, um, there are certain things that got in the way for me personally, and those things were the opinions of others and the opinions of myself. Firstly, uh, let's take some ownership. I wasn't really as confident as I should have been, um, you know, but that kind of gets beaten into you in the kind of daily grind of growing up, adolescent life. Um, and I had the self-doubt, I had the lack of confidence, um, but that was probably down to me not really understanding my process and some bad client experiences, but those bad client experiences happened because, do you know what I mean? I probably made them happen. I wasn't in control of the process as much. So what this happened was those opinions of myself, those little voices in my head started to grow. Do you know what I mean? And that was one side of the problem. The other side of the problem was, you know, listening to the opinions of others. Um, do you know what I mean? Oh, you shouldn't be a creative. Oh, there's no money in art. Oh, do you know what I mean? Like you're not good enough and all this kind of stuff. And what this happened, and what happened through a combination of these two things was that I started to lack identity, as you can see in the middle here. This little purple, I don't even know what shape that is, leaf shape. Um, yeah, I started to lack a little bit of identity. And by listening to these opinions constantly, um, it was really difficult for me to really figure out who I was and the person I wanted to be. And it's just so noisy out there, isn't it? So freaking noisy. Um, and it makes perfect sense where this quote comes in. You know, there are a lot of designers going nowhere fast. Um, you know, we're constantly being told to do this, do that, grow this, be there, go over there, be this person, niche down, niche up, go around in a circle, whatever it is. There's so many people like climbing a ladder that isn't necessarily theirs to climb. There's so many people growing an audience um, online, which is fantastic, but are those people, are the people within that audience going to be active buyers in the future? Who knows? We don't know. So I think it's really, really important that we all have this time, we all take this time to kind of self-reflect, um, to help us move forward, to help us go in the right direction, to help us find our North Star and move forward. So, as I mentioned, it's easy to get distracted, um, especially in today's world with, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, you know, you've got all the design influencers, you've got all the salesy people, you've got all the marketing bros, do you know what I mean? Like, hacks for 10k months, shortcuts to dream clients, all the trending audio, trending this, trending that, follow this, follow that. Um, it's so easy to get distracted from the reason why we started. Um, and if you're anything like me, and like I'm not here telling you that I have all this stuff figured out. I never will. I'm still learning every single day. Sorry, excuse me. Um, but the point is, is that we need to try and remember the reason why we started the things that we're doing. So we got into this world because we're creative people. Like I would imagine like all of you listening to this didn't get into the creative industry, into the design industry to just create content for hours and hours and hours a week um, for Instagram that doesn't pay you to do that. Do you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Um, so we have to remember why we started and there's a journey, there's a process, there has to be some patience, the resilience, discipline, adaptability. Yeah, and I'm not saying here that content and media isn't a great way to market yourself and establish a voice online, but we have to remember it's not the only thing we're here to do, all right? So what is the solution? These three things that I'm going to talk to you about today are the things that help me find my way. Now, I'm not saying they're going to work for you, but I believe they are pretty um, general in, in terms of um, mindset shifts and bits and pieces like that. And I know if they helped me, helped me, help me find my way. I would like to think that they may help you find your way and just get you back on track, you know, get you in that lane that you're supposed to be traveling down, all right? So, number one, 
Um, input is more important than output. Um, now this mindset shift changed everything for me, um, you know, about maybe six or seven years ago now, um, where I realized that I was more important than the work that I create. Um, this mindset shift really kind of allowed me to understand that, you know, I am worth more. Um, the things I do are valuable. Um, and like when I break that down into kind of slightly simplistic terms, I see that as like, you know, clients don't come to me for a logo. They don't come to me for some colors. They don't come to me for a logo type or a word mark or a brand identity. What they're actually coming to me for is the way I think, um, the way I think differently. And like when we talk about being unique and we talk about finding our way and we talk about the things that truly make us different, um, the way you think is what makes you different because things like logos, um, uh, brand identities, websites, um, general design services. Like these services are expected of you, but there are also hundreds of thousands of other designers doing exactly the same thing. But there'll be only one designer like you who can think the way that you think, and that is you. So really understanding that your power is in here, the way you articulate your ideas, the way you share your thoughts, the way you come up with concepts, the way you choose the colors and the directions you go in. This is the superpower. So when you start to really line in on that and hone in on that, you can't lose, all right? Input over output. Number two, uh, and this is something I talk about a lot, is the advice trap. Um, now, if uh, what they say, opinions are like buttholes. Do you know what I mean? Um, everybody's got one and most of them stink. Do you know what I mean? So um, take that one with you. Um, so it's really, really important to understand that everybody has these opinions and everybody will be willing to give you advice. And sometimes they'll be looking to give you their opinion, looking to give you their advice, even when you don't ask for it. So it's really, really, really important to understand and align with yourself, with who are the most in people? Who are, who are the most important people to me? Who are the people that I need to listen to? Who are the people that are where I want to be in life? Um, so like in all essence, yes, we should be listening to our parents and our friends, but we only listen to them to some degree because they ultimately care about us, but they are not doing the things potentially that we want to be doing with our lives. So it's very difficult to take their advice. Whereas for me, as I look to scale a business, as I look to grow a brand, I'm looking for other people who have already done that and have been proven leaders in doing that. Those are the people that I'm taking most of my advice off. Um, so because like I said, they're where I want to be. So um, what this allows you to do is it allows you to kind of really understand the opinions that matter and the advice that matters. Um, so you're not listening to all the fluffy noise that's going on in the background. All right, so remember that, the advice trap. Really, really hone in on those important people. And there should be like three to five, do you know what I mean? Like if you're listening to the whole internet, it's no wonder you're getting distracted because everybody's you know, everybody's making it up. We're all making it up. We're all falling forward. We're all trying to we're all trying to just get through the day. Nobody knows what they're doing in all honesty. Let's be totally honest about that. All right. But there are some people who have proven themselves to move forward and to grow and to scale. And if that's what you want to do, follow them. Do you know what I mean? And listen to them. Number three. Now this one always seems like such a negative, you know, telling people to be a little selfish. Um, but what you've got to understand is that if you are happy, the people around you will be happy. Um, like even as a father now, even as a dad to my baby boy Rocco, um, you know, I still make time for the things I want to do, the person I want to be, um, the, the big purpose, the big vision I want for my company, because I know if I can push towards that, his life will be better. And I still spend as, as much time with him as I can. Obviously, he's my, he's my you know, he's my world. Um, but I don't stop everything. Do you know what I mean? For other people, um, when I know I've got so much to do myself. So you have to be a little 
a little selfish with your time. You have to find pockets in your time to build your dreams, to be the person you want to be, to become the, the thing or build the legacy that you want. You have to try and find time with that. Now, I know parents out there, I know there's students out there, I know there's individuals out there who are running multiple jobs potentially, and I know it's really, really difficult to do. And you've got a obviously a list of priorities. Um, and sometimes we put ourselves down to the bottom or maybe just above the bottom and what that allows other people to do is take our time to absorb our time to absorb our energy which leaves us none um what i would suggest you try and do is put your put yourself first and then see what happens to all the people underneath you because i guarantee that if you're energized and you're happy and you're doing the things that you want to do in your life all of the people around you will be happy all right so please try and add a little bit of a selfishness into your days because it's a truly powerful ability that spreads joy around you, all right? So please do that. Now, this quote took me a little bit of time to figure out the first time I heard it, but now it makes perfect, perfect sense. Um, your identity is a decision, not a destiny. Um, and what i love about this once i figured it out like i said is is this ability of choice do you know what i mean we have the one thing we all have as creative people the one thing we all have as humans is choice um most of the time like i know there's some crazy examples there where we don't have a choice but we have a choice to be whatever we want to be like the thing that we've become is not totally set in stone for us it's not like um i don't know what they call it you know, it's not chosen or whatever, whichever way we want to look at it. Like we've got all the choices that we make, all the effort that we put in, help us become the person we're going to come, uh, become. So please remember that these choices are really, really, really important for you. So like when we can break this down in this little graph here, you know, where are you now? to where you want to be. And I can, I, like I say, I'm always going to talk about myself, my journey, um, you know, in between where I am today and where I want to be in 10 years time, there are a lot of choices I'm going to have to make. Um, some of them are going to be easier than others. Some of them are going to be more difficult than others, but they are my choices to make. How much effort am I going to put in? What time am I going to get up? Am I going to look after myself? Am I going to get some good sleep? Am I going to partner with the right people? What am I going to build? How much you know, energy am I going to put into this particular program or this particular course or this particular YouTube video? Do you know what I mean? All of these are choices that I make every single day. And you have the same ability. Like You have the choice. Um, you can make the choice to get up every day and work hard towards something that you want. Um, or you can choose not to. Now, you can choose whatever you want, but you cannot sit back and complain if the things you want don't happen if you're not making the right choices to get you there. All right? So think in decades, plan in months, and execute every day. This is a really good mindset to follow. Like, Think in decades. Okay, so where do I want to be in 10 years? Look, it's impossible to plan, but you can think about the person you want to be. You can be thinking about the things you possibly want to become, you know, the things you want to be doing, the people you want to be helping. So once you understand that, you then plan in months, all right? Um, and that gives you a much smaller window to focus on because the things you're going to do over the next few months are going to help you get to that place you want to be in the decade. Um, and then every single day, execute that plan. You know, one big thing that you would have heard me speak about a lot, and I will continue to speak about because it's the game changer, is 90-day windows. Um, all the biggest, best businesses on the planet, probably overgeneralized there, um, are working in 90 day windows. Um, the beautiful thing about a 90 day window is that it's long enough to achieve plenty of few, uh, plenty of things, but it's short enough to stay interested. And as creative people, it's really difficult for us to not get distracted by stuff. Oh, maybe I'll do that, or maybe I'll do that. What you do is like you've got Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. These are all 90 day windows across a whole year. 
Every quarter, you should be setting yourself a bunch of targets. What are the three to five biggest things that are going to move my business forward over the next 90 days? Once you understand those, put them in a document, look at them every single day and bring nothing else in. Don't do anything else apart from those things in those 90 days. Because if you complete three to five things that are going to move your business forward every quarter, imagine the compound effect of doing that for a year, three years, five years, you're constantly gonna be moving forward, all right? So please, 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 please take this away. 90 day windows. Um, I believe I've done a, a free course, which we'll put down below here, which you can grab. Um, it's a free video, you can watch it where I talk about 90 day windows in more detail. And I've got like programs and stuff coming up where I go into this in much bigger, deeper detail as well. So this is gonna be the thing that changes your business if you work in these 90 day windows. And one final thing from me is I want you to remember this little quote. The world is too big for small dreams. Um, that's where I'm going to leave it. Don't forget to grab the freebie, absorb more knowledge around here, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Peace.